Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we're going to dig into HTTP interfaces and security because um, we have already talked about the HTTP interfaces in Spring Boot 3. So if you haven't seen that video, please go back and watch that one, then come back to this one. Um, yeah, so the, the trick is that with Spring Boot 3, we have something called HTTP interfaces. This means that we can actually define um, we can actually define our clients as an interface. Then let's just show you right, right here. Um, so I, I, we can define it as a as an interface right here. So we have a public interface spaceship client, and this client can connect to something with a um, yeah with a URL that starts with space, and then with also with something that then ends with ships. And we can use uh, get, get methods like this. We define all of it as an interface. This means that we do not need to have that ugly REST, and REST template where we add the whole uh, uh, URL uh, yeah, uh, in, in one long string URL, and then we have to think about configuration or, and all that. With the HTTP interfaces, we have a structure for calling out and reaching all other uh, REST interfaces than the one that is in the current application. This is awesome, but what about security? We did not we did not cover that last time. And security in many situations are usually actually just a header. If it's basic authentication, then we just need a header like this, authorization, and then we need a uh, base64 encoded uh, string with the username and password. And you can actually use my webpage. Uh, I have this webpage right here, codemistigator.com. And then you can use that. You just press security right here, and then you can type in your name. In this situation, my, my the username is Mike. The password is uh, kiss me, kiss me like this. And then you just press copy right here, and then you get this string right here. The first part that is the key in the header. The last part that is the uh, that is the value. If you want to uh, if you want to authenticate yourself against the against the web server that you're uh, that you're reaching and against the endpoint that you're reaching, then you uh, then you just uh, have this as a value, basic space, and then the basic default. Uh, encoding, encoding, encoding of the mic colon and then uh, kiss me, which is right here. So uh, this is exactly what we are going to do with the uh, with the HTTP um, interface right here. There is another way to solve this. The, now in this situation, I solved it for one endpoint right here, but we can actually also solve it for all endpoints, uh, and I will also show how to do that. Uh, just bear in mind that I also have another request header here. This is just to show you that you can actually have multiple headers. This is just a header named Mike, and then the uh, string is fun. Then you can name whatever you want, and then uh, yeah, then you have you have multi multiple HTTP headers in your request. That's just what I'm trying to show right here with this um, yeah with with this definition in your HTTP interface. Spring Boot 3 is cool. If you haven't tried it, just yeah, uh, get get on with it and try it. And here we have the HTTP exchange. It could also have been. I could also use the at get exchange instead. Uh, then I would then I would have then I could leave out the method equals to get right here. The URL is ships with header. In this with this application right here, I'm actually both the REST provider and also and also the REST uh, consumer. Um, so this means that I've actually just placed my REST interface in another package, which is uh, which is down here. So in my spaceship controller right here, here I have a uh, ships. Uh, Ships with header right here, and this uh, this is actually request that I have a header named Mike, and then I can print out the results. Uh, yeah, regarding that header right here, and then I return some spaceships which are hard coded. The spaceships comes from this method right here. Here we have all of the spaceships right here. Um, I have added security since the last time, since since you saw the yeah since the last video uh, regarding HTTP interfaces. Then I have added security, and I've added that in one class right here. So let us just look at how easy it is to set up Spring Security with Spring Boot 3. Um, it is quite easy when you know how to do it as usual. So first of all, you need some kind of encoder. So this is actually a this is actually a uh, encryption. It's actually a password encryptor. It's, it's quite basic. It's good for uh, it's good for demo projects. If for real uh, production environment uh, pro projects, you probably want a better encryption than this default bcrypt uh, password encoder right here. But it doesn't matter. We are going to use that for this uh, demo uh, purpose right here. So then you have to create some 
Uh, you have to create an, uh, a memory uh, user, de- a memory user details manager because this is where you have your users. And in this situation, we will just place them in memory. So we will just create two times user details. If you have some kind of system where you have a database with all of your users, passwords, and roles, then of course you would just uh, get th- get that from the database. Of course, right? This is just to, to show the easy way when where, where, where we just hard code it right here. So. Another hard-coded user is Stain. Password kiss me again, so there is the same password. I have created, I have two roles right here, Captain and Crew. And you can just mention the roles as strings. You do not have to define these roles anywhere to begin with. What is important, though, is that the roles that you have right here uh, apply to, of course, this user with that password right there. And those roles are used to, to put on the security on each of the endpoints later on. Um, yeah. And that's exactly what we do right here in the security filter chain. So in in the in the security filter chain, then here we define what kind of security we want on our application. First of all, we are we are disabling this uh, cross uh, for portary uh, refresh token. This is because this is made for. Um, for the web applications where you actually have a form and then you put in a special token that we're not going to use that because we have a REST interface. So we can just totally disable this one right here. Then we have a cause. This means that we are actually, um, this means that we, we are checking for co- cross origin requests. Fortree, this means that if we have a front end that wants to, um, to reach this, then the, the, the beginning of the URL has to match the beginning of the URL of this backend right here. So this is what this means. You can create exceptions if you want to. I have showed you, I have showed you this in another video. So I'm not, uh, I'm not spending time on that right there. Um, and then we have some. Then we have the important part, and then we have this, that is the authorized HTTP request. And here we get this is a lambda, and of course, I just pressed Control Space, and I got this long name right here. But you could just have have it named A or something like that, A right there. So it's just a lambda right here. So it's lambda where you actually set up your request matches, where you set up your. Uh, this is in old days it was your and matches. So the the it just looks like this now. You have to to write request matches and then some kind of string pattern right here. Then I say that space and then any anything under space needs the role captain. And then I say anything uh, that that uh, reaches the endpoint other. Uh, can be reached by uh, by uh, by anyone by any role at all permit all. This means that uh, people that are not authenticated can also reach this endpoint because permit all also means uh, uh, anonymous. Uh, in Spring and Spring Security, there is actually a role, default role that's called Anonymous. This means that if a user has not tried to log in, if there are no security added to the request, to the HTTP request, then uh, that request will actually get the role of Anonymous, role underscore Anonymous. Um, and this will be then be allowed right here because it is allowed by yeah by role Anonymous. So th- that is what it says. Permit all, it means permit all, right? So. It's just to know that. Um, so then we have any request authenticated right here. Um, yeah, that, that is, it needs to be authenticated with these rules right here. So just look look at the last line as a, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of a, it's, it's just the end of your, um, of, of your match, of your matches, of, of your, of your setup, right? Then we have HTTP basic uh, right here. So this is the, yeah, that, that's what we use. And then we use the default, um, the default values. You can read a bit more. About, you can read up on this. It's very, it's very rare that you have to change this. This is how. Uh, yeah, this is there are some special uh, uh, configurations you can do right here. But uh, I'll not dig into this in this video right here. And then you run HTTP build, and then you return that in the end. So this means that you're actually returning a default security filter chain, and that is also a security filter chain. So. That's quite cool. So this is the this was the security setup. One page, right? Almost. So we have a, yeah, we have. A, I'll just I'm just cleaning up the imports with Control Alt O for 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 that. And that is actually our application. So this this means that now if we have an application, we have a backend which is something with spaceships right here. And then we have a um, then we have a client right here. This is the other. You can see here the, all of this is named other. This means that I can actually reach this. I can reach this. Um, I can reach this endpoint anonymously. I don't have. I don't have to log in to reach this. Then I have other try stuff clients right here. And here I am actually using the. 
I'm injecting, as you can see right here, I'm injecting my spaceship client. This is my HTTP interface. So this means that this is actually an interface where Spring Boot will create the implementation of this HTTP interface. This is the awesome part. Because then I, then I get this, and then instead of actually thinking about endpoints, when I write my code, this is my business logic I have right here. I don't want to think about endpoints. Of course, I am... Uh, <laughs> yeah, of course, I am inside the REST controller, so of course I have to think about it's uh, yeah the endpoint for the REST controller. But for all of all of the stuff that I'm calling out in the world, um, I don't I don't want to think about that. I just want my I want my implementation of the interface right, and then I want to use that instead. And that is exactly what HTTP interfaces, client interfaces, delivers to us. So that means that I can actually call spaceship, and then I can say ships uh, with header. Then I can give my security header right here, and here's my security header. It's basic space, and then I base64 encode Mike, and then kiss me as the password, right? So this is the security part right here. It is very ugly to place it here, and it's very wrong to put it here. I just want to show you that you can actually place it here if you want to. You can place it per endpoint if you want to, but there's a better way. There's a better way, and I'm going to show you the better way. Just, uh, just bear with me. Um, so so uh, so this means that uh, with, with with this um, with this call right here spaceship the ships with the header then i actually uh, i apply I, I give the security header as one argument and then i give another argument that says yes he is and then um, yeah and then i use the result i just put that in a map right here that's just to have something um, that i store so i store the data and then i then i return that as the results um, yeah for for whoever called this endpoint right here and this was yeah then this could be an anonymous uh, use of course let us just go to the let me just go to the, the the declaration of the interface method right here just one more time so we have the authorization this means this because we use basic authentication and this is this is the string that i uh, put together with uh, mike colon kiss and then i'm giving another uh, header right here which is uh, mike and then the is fun and it's just to show you that we can place multiple stuff in the header okay before I'm going to try these endpoints, let me just show you the right way to configure this because we have this um, we have this client configuration right here. This is actually where I where I say that I want to use the HTTP uh, client interface. So this is this is where the magic actually happens right here. So here I'm creating a web client with the builder pattern. Then I say the, the base URL is localhost port 8080. And, and then I just say build, right? That was that was what I did just before. Uh, and then here we have the factory. Then we have this code right here. It's very ugly, but you just you just have to write every for every HTTP interface that you have. You have to create this proxy factory right here, and then you have to use a builder. You have to use a web client adapter for client, and then you have to give this client up here as an argument, and you have to build it. So this code right here is something you look up every time, or you copy paste it from somewhere because it is it is quite ugly. But what you don't copy paste every time is up here in the web client um, on top of giving a base URL. Then I can actually also say some default headers. Look, I can give a default header right here, string header, and here I can actually have authorization. Author authorization and this is like a http hitter hit us and then i think there's one like yeah okay i i'll just use the string method right here so i'll say defeat the default authorization and here then i can actually say that i want to get to apply and then this could be uh, the steam and then kiss me right so this is then i can log on as a steam instead this is the right way this is the way that you actually want to or authenticate yourself if you can place it right there then do that um, sometimes you have uh, something else than default authentication sometimes you might have something um sometimes you might have something that where you have a token for instance that you, you have a token that is actually timing out then you could actually uh, then you could actually uh, use the approach that we have right here where you add that token to the header inside the inside the http uh, client interface uh, so i'm just saying telling you that there are those two ways right here there are the um yeah we have the configuration right here with the default headers and then we have the um and then we have the, the yeah and, and then we have the way where we actually add it to each uh, each each method to each endpoint right here um yeah so that's actually regarding that. Now let us try it out now. So I've actually already started uh, my application. So this means if I go to 
a terminal. If I go to my package.json file, because first let's let us actually test that the security actually works. So here we have the curl all ships with header. First, I want to see that um, that my security actually works. So I would actually expect that I would get. Uh, let us try it. Uh, oh, let us. That's okay. Let us try that actually. So I'll, I'll just press and play right here. So I'm curling, and I got something. Yeah, what did I get? I did not get any output, and this is because we need to write minus v for verbose. Then we can actually see what kind of HTTP status code that we get uh, returned. See, right here we get 401. 401 unauthentic, uh, uh, un unauthorized. So that is because we are not allowed to actually, um, we're not allowed to, uh, to reach this endpoint right here on uh, un unauthenticated here. Yeah. Um, For, I, I'm, I'm always mixing up for, for one, yeah, on, on, on authorized, and then for three, is then uh, uh, that is then uh, the other one. So we have forbidden, yeah. So we have forbidden and, and unauthorized. Unauthorized is because we have not provided any lack. We have not provided any authentication credentials, and that, that is also true. We have we just reached that as anonymous. So that is quite cool, and we will get the same if we. Um, so let us add some security. That's actually what I did here, right here with curl. If you write minus u, even though it it, says, it actually stands for username and password, so this means that you can actually it's basic authentication, and then you can use set the, the the username right here, and then you can set the password on the other side of the colon right there. So even though it just says minus u, then it's actually both the username and the password that will be base64 encoded and then placed uh, in the header. So this is the, a feature from the curl, um, from, from the curl utils that we use right here. So now let us try to reach localhost space from destination and then mass. So this means that now we are trying to reach one of the secure endpoints. And let us see if it actually works. Yes, it works because we got the JSON response right here. So this means we got 200, uh, HTTP code 200 returned right here. And then we got the uh, the yeah then we got the JSON right here, name Swan, Captain Brian, fuel left eighty, and then destination Mars. This is a spaceship that we got right there, so that that is fine. Um, yeah. So, but we what we actually wanted to try was actually try stuff. Look at this endpoint right here. There are no security on this endpoint. This means that I can go onto this uh, endpoint anonymously, and then I would still get my and I should still get my response because look, because there are no security on this endpoint right here. The, so this means that I can go on this uh, anonymously. And then we, when we reach that, that is the try stuff controller. And here inside the try stuff controller, then we are in here. Then we actually use the HTTP uh, HTTP client interface, which is right here. And here we are. Here we are adding the base uh, uh, basic authentication. The mic gives me. Uh, header, which is right here. So that we have the header right there, and we add that to this endpoint right here. So th this is where this, the security actually uh, happens. This is awesome, right? So this means that the whole setup actually works. So now we have a setup where we can apply security. We have, first of all, yeah, we, we can we can define our security, of course, as, as we want to right here. With this setup right here, we can set the end matches. So some of our endpoints are secure and some of them are not. And then we can also create uh, the, the the HTTP client interfaces in its own uh, interface file, and then we don't have to think about the endpoints and how they are um, a security. And we, we also yeah we don't need to think about security also because uh, that is taken care of either with a an extra argument, an extra parameter, uh, sorry, an extra parameter in the method, or by adding that to the client configuration where we would add some default headers, some default uh, security. Uh, some default authentication right here instead. That is again one of the big strengths from uh, for, 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 from for this uh, HTTP client interface. They are so easy to use. We do not think about uh, we, we don't have to think about security when we use them. We don't have to think about um, we don't have to think about the the final URL and the base URL because the base URL has been set in the client configuration right here. Of course, we would configure this in our uh, application the properties file. So we of course we will set this as something right here, uh, like dot base URL, something like that. And then we would set that to, to that URL right there. And then we would then um and then we would then uh, of course uh, place that in here with a add value or we would use configuration properties which uh, is much a, a much cleaner approach to your configuration uh, properties 
please watch that video regarding configuration properties. It is awesome. Uh, so yes, but that's it. This is uh, security with HTTP uh, client interfaces and Spring Boot 3. I think this is awesome. It is so much fun to uh, be to, to, to code to yeah to be a Java developer and, and to code with Spring Boot because uh, yeah the framework is it's just it's a pleasure to to, to use. It, it is a lot of fun. So um, thank you very much for watching. Have a great evening. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.